In the dark alleys of London, a mystery lurked. A mysterious figure walked in the shadows. His name was Jack the Ripper. He was a predator, a phantom, and an enigma that haunted the city. The year was 1888. The streets were cold and unforgiving. Fear gripped Whitechapel, a downtrodden district of East London. Whispers spread through its winding lanes like wildfire. Jack had claimed his first victim. She lay lifeless in Buck's Row, her throat slashed twice from ear to ear. Her name was Mary Ann Nichols, known as Polly to her friends. Panic set in among Whitechapel's residents. They feared for their lives and for their loved ones. The newspapers sensationalized each gruesome detail of the crime scene. The police were baffled by the case as they searched for clues in vain. They tried to profile this mysterious killer, but he remained elusive like smoke drifting through foggy streets. Then came Annie Chapman's murder on September 8 that same year, another vicious attack on an innocent woman who had fallen on hard times. Jack didn't stop there either. His bloodlust seemed insatiable as he went on to claim more victims such as Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes who met their grisly fates within hours of each other on September 30th. People couldn't help but be captivated by this twisted tale that unfolded before them like pages ripped from a penny dreadful novel. It seemed too horrifyingly real to be true. Rumors swirled around about Jack's true identity. Some believed he was an upper-class citizen merely slumming it for thrills while others thought him part of some dark brotherhood carrying out sinister rituals involving human sacrifices. Letters were sent to newspapers claiming responsibility for these barbaric acts signed only, Jack the Ripper. Was it really him, or was it the work of a deranged copycat reveling in the terror he had unleashed upon London streets? The murders grew increasingly grotesque as Jack's skill with a blade became more refined. He seemed to take pleasure in dismembering his victims, leading many to speculate that he may have had surgical training. The final victim would be Mary Jane Kelly. She was found on November 9, her room painted crimson with her own blood. The sight was so gruesome that it would haunt even the most seasoned investigators for years to come. Despite their best efforts, the police were no closer to catching this enigmatic killer than they were when he first struck terror into the hearts of Londoners. Then, just as suddenly as they began, the murders stopped. Was Jack caught? Did he flee elsewhere or perhaps meet his own demise at the hands of another? Theories and speculations abound about who this shadowy figure could have been, from butchers and physicians to royalty and artists like Walter Sickert who some claim hid clues in his paintings about these unspeakable acts. Yet even after more than a century has passed since those fateful nights filled with bloodshed and fear, no one has ever been able to definitively prove who Jack the Ripper truly was or what motivated him to wreak such havoc on innocent lives. And so, like an apparition that fades into nothingness at dawn's first light, Jack remains shrouded in darkness. Forever an enigma whose name will be forever etched into history as one of its most notorious unsolved mysteries. In our fascination with true crime stories, we often forget about those who suffered at their hands, Polly Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes. But especially Mary Jane Kelly, whose final moments were spent in sheer terror before her brutal end came crashing down upon her like a relentless storm undeterred by the passage of time. Rest in peace, dear souls, for you will not be forgotten, and may the truth one day come to light so that justice may finally be served.